How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another Brood War ladder cast. We've got Quickly versus Bishop. These are two players that I know a lot of you guys are excited about, myself included. I am becoming a very big Quickly fan. I watched a lot of his games recently on the ladder and uh, casted a lot of his games. So, um, He's somebody that I'm looking forward to seeing in the ASL. I just watched the qualifiers, so I won't spoil for you whether he gets in or not. But I watched it on stream on Twitch, so if you guys want to check that out, I made the VODs public. Uh, if I remember, I will throw a link down in the description. And you guys can go check that out. I've been wondering what to do about uh, making content for the qualifier. For the ASL slash SSL qualifier, and I, I think that's a pretty good mi mixture, I guess, or medium, happy medium, to do a little Twitch stream, just kind of casually watch through, uh, hang out with you guys in the chat, have a little conversation, and then make a highlights video where I just talk about the results and just a few tidbits of information about you know kind of what happened the big um the big points to the opening part of the season i think that's a good way to do it and i'm gonna release that highlights video here pretty soon sometime this week i imagine put aside some time to put that together uh with the content that i've got recorded and with the videos uh, themselves so if you're not interested in watching that I think it's like 10 hours long uh, both day one and day two not quite 10 hours each video is five hours long but there's a bit of downtime in each video which I skip over of course uh, in my stream so it's around like three and a half hours each one but if you don't have you know six to seven hours to burn just watching the qualifiers that might be for you, that uh, highlight video might be uh, what you're looking forward to. Now, quickly here, as cross map position versus Bishop. Bishop's actually opened up more greedily though. You can see he's putting the bunker out very far forward. He's trying to make it look like maybe he's, like, I don't, I don't know why else he would want to put the bunker out here aside from he wants to make it look like maybe he's going for uh, a two factory play behind this and just kind of fake out quickly potentially uh, when he comes over here to think that this um, this could be some sort of you know no command center build but it's j definitely a very fast command center <clears throat> excuse me We've just got the gas online now. Factory's coming up here on the high ground. So this is nothing too crazy out of Bishop, but he is kind of disguising what he's doing a little bit. You see the probe can't run by here. He'll have to come in, I think, with the Dragoon. Run pretty far by just to get the information uh, that it's actually a CC. And if he doesn't do that, uh, he might kind of misread the present situation. We have a citadel on the way. Looks like we're going to be going into DT after this kind of basic opener from quickly. He's going to very soon mix it up with that DT play. See, okay, he does get a robotics facility as well. Robotics and Templar at the same time. This is all lining up for a nice DT drop timing. We should have a second gateway. There it is. And double factory engineering bay. I really do feel like Bishop should be able to handle this no problem. As long as he does what he's supposed to. Get some turrets up. You know, turret here. Maybe a turret over here. Possible turret there. Another one over here and one down by the uh, supply depots over in this area. He should be fine. Now it's going to be up to his execution and how quickly winds up getting in here. He's just taking his little tacks here at the front. 
It was pretty funny. There was a comment recently. I was saying that this is the Protoss tax and someone was saying, oh, it just takes, he doesn't actually, nobody actually gets the money from him, uh, you know, repairing the bunker. So it's not really a tax. And somebody else said um, in the comments that that's exactly how taxes work, <laughs> that the money just goes directly to waste. So I thought that was pretty hilarious. We have the, oh, oh my gosh. Is he going after that tank? Oh God, I never expected that. I was actually gonna take a look at when the ETs were gonna be coming out. We do have a third base on the way as well. Possibly an Arbiter transition from here. That is the standard way to play. Off of a DT opener. Go into Arbiters because you know there's not gonna be too many scans. And traditionally in this matchup, Terran players are not gonna get a really quick Vessel, so they're gonna be relying on scans for the most part To try and push back the DTs and then they probably will run out if they're gonna push early Run out of scans and then the arbiters can help clean up everything two DTs coming into the main Bishop has not done what he's supposed to what I mentioned earlier in Getting these missile turrets up. He has one in the natural and none in the main Oh, this is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt bad. There's a turret starting. And the DTs will go to work. What was he expecting, honestly? Like, this could have been a, a Reaver play and it would have done almost as much damage. The main base keep being completely open. No tanks in here. He's just gonna go straight across the map with the, all of his tanks. Okay, well, how does that work out? Um... If a DT is made back at home, I think you still just lose everything. I'm gonna go after this tank, doing quite a bit of damage. My God, DTs do so much DPS. It is insane. This guy's already got a ton of kills, nine kills right there. There's the DT popping out. Gonna be dealing some damage. He's gonna try and, I don't know what this is, kite, I guess? And just focus down the Nexus? This tank is just about to die. He does manage to kite that. He kills the Nexus and just goes home. Well, that is interesting. Still trying to build some turrets over here. Probably not going to happen. DT chasing down. Looks like he got the single kill. No. Maybe just a kill on a Marine instead. This DT is still being super nice. 17 kill DT in the end. That finally does go down. What's the transitionary play, Stargate? It will be for those Arbiters. <clears throat> Tank's gonna make their way into the natural. Can he actually get a kill on one of these? No, DT does go down. Wow, all of these tanks so low. One DT hit away from death, each of them. And so, he will be able to repair those up. This went not as bad for Bishop as I expected, but I mean, that was a terrible situation to try and deal with. Ab utterly, absolutely horrible situation. Now, he's going to come in with some of these vultures. Can we get some mine connection? Ooh, great big mine connection there. I think that was mostly on the vultures, though. I don't think that killed a lot of Protoss units. Yeah, that was, um, <laughs> that was not that great. That was a little anticlimactic. Look at how low all of these are, by the way. These Dragoons are so, so low here. And the probe count is still looking very, very nice. The vulture count is dismal now. With only three, three more coming forward. But he's going to try and push with five tanks. Just a very scant few vultures mixed in. This is going to be a tough, tough sell over at the Protoss base. He's coming up from the south side. I'm going to try and set up as close to the natural as he can. He's being very tentative here. He wants to get a turret up as soon as possible. Really important that he does so because the Arbiter is going to be popping out here soon. He needs that detection. He wants to save this. He wants to break this, excuse me. Gonna unseige most of the tanks, and the DT does pop out. 
Diaz and Zelts getting right on top of this some more. Vultures arrive, but majority of the tanks are getting picked off here. Oh, wow, a lot of go goons suddenly go down because so many of them were low on that HP. Just three tanks remain, and they're out of range of any Nexus or anything. So he still has quite some ways to go before he can break this. Another turret being set up. Tanks shoving forward. He's maybe going to get in range of this Nexus now. Only two Dragoons at the natural. Eight are on the way, though. Eight Dragoons about to pop out here. 63 probes. Certainly has the income to build an army capable of breaking this. Only three tanks, yes. Just three. Making their way up here to the front. There's the Arbiter. Building a little supply depot here at the front. Pretty sick move here from Bishop. Quickly having a really hard time breaking this. We'll drag some of these mines, but a lot of zealots die there for just one tank. And it's not looking good now. Here for quickly, he's falling apart. In short order, we're down to just 50 probes. Still pretty good probe number. But this Nexus is starting to get low. Can he actually break out? I don't see an observer with this. That mine could be devastating. Oh, mine does go off on a bunch of these Dragoons. Nexus is getting low. Eight more Zealots are about to pop. He's going to try and break through with the Arbiter. There's no... A uh, turret on top of these tanks. Can he actually break this? There's the one scan. And the Nexus goes down. Does he have any more scans? He's got two more scans remaining. So he should be able to keep himself alive with those scans. Oh, great mind drag there. Filling off quite a bit of this army. Gonna try and do it again. We can make it happen. He's still gonna be in a tough position, but he won't necessarily die right now. Bishop decides to go home. He turns around and starts to run back. Can we catch up to this? Quickly is going to try to run down as many of these tanks as he can. These two tanks coming to join the party at the very worst possible time. Diving on top of this. He's going to kill a few tanks here. The Arbiter. Kind of low on that HP. And the two Goliaths could be a threat. Just falling back right now. There's five tanks trying to make their way home. He might be able to clear out all of these. Oh, this one mine. Oh, that two second mine just crushing everything. Crushing really the hopes and dreams of quickly in this game. Oh, what a mine connection though. Getting incredibly good mine connection there. Whoa, two Dragoons end up going down. So it goes both ways. Sometimes you get good mine connections. Sometimes your opponent gets good mind connections. It's a double-edged sword, truly. The definition of a double-edged sword, the spider mine in Brood War. Oof. Another dragoon goes down. More damage here from these mines and a, an extreme lack of observers in this army. A fourth base likely to come up here in a moment. But the third is already mining for Bishop. He's got 62 SCVs. He should have a clear and simple closer from this. A very strong position. Kind of shocking that Bishop has been able to bring it back this well. After the DT drop in the main did so much damage. That 17 kill DT. Looking like snow in one of those pro league games or pro league nights when he kills like five Terran players in a row and his team still not able to take the win. Win an entire round by himself. And he's just not got the backpack necessary to carry the team to the victory that DT back broken in the next life. Looking down here on this Protoss player, wondering what went wrong. How come we're not able to win this fight after he did so much work? It's just not fair. Arbiter over here at the bottom center. Maybe thinking about going in for a recall. Doesn't have the energy to do so. There's a lot of missile turrets here ready to 
counter that as well. We've got double upgrades on the way. We're about to hit 2-2 two -two here in another couple of moments. As quickly looks for ways to deal damage. I think that Bishop is setting himself up for the final blow. He's winding up. Getting his army together. Getting ready to deal that damage. Let's see if this uh, Arbiter can get in. He's ready to dive for it. There are three turrets down here. If he doesn't come in at the perfect angle, this turret is going to get some damage going as well. It's like you can see the, the first turret there. And the Arbiter is spotted. Sending back some vultures just to lay a few extra mines. There's so many mines in here. This would almost be suicidal to try and recall into this position. Uh, it's almost better to just wait for a fourth base from the Terran player and try to recall on that. Uh, I do believe we have stasis as well, though I haven't seen it in the production tab. EMP is on the way and a fourth base is in production right now for Bishop. There are definitely still ways to lose this game. He did a lot of damage. He slowed down quickly by quite a good margin. But it's not a completely one game just yet. There's always the, the throw factor, right? He might be able to find a way to lose this game. Even after things have gone so well. After the initial DT did a ton of damage. He's done a great job of maneuvering his way back into this game. Some vultures coming forward here. They're going to get completely trapped. And zealots do take a lot of damage from those mines, but he clears out all the, all the vultures. One more scan comes down. These dragoons are going to die. And the vultures may be able to make it out of this position. Dragoons are coming down to assist. And so the vultures can't really get any more kills. But they've done their job, right? They've really slowed down any further bases in the bottom right-hand corner. A Nexus is going to come up here at the top center. That's fine. As the fourth base comes to land here at the center left. Bishop with 65 workers is just about to mine out of both his natural and main. Natural, in fact, already mined out completely. So he needs these extra two bases. You really want to stay on at least two base mining at all times as the Terran player in this matchup. We've got two Arbiters with full energy, 200 energy. We're about to get the amulet upgrade. Ooh, that mine. Oh my gosh, the mine though. Oop, there it is. And the EMP goes down. It's one of these Arbiters. That's a bit frustrating. Uh, another EMP might go off. He's going to throw down a stasis on the ramp. Nicely done. Stasis there on the tanks as well. Can he actually get up this ramp? He really wants to break the space right now. Stop Bishop from advancing any further. No observer with this army, unfortunately. That, uh, oh my god, that Arbiter. Just about getting picked off there. Gonna run forward and start to deal with some of these pesky goliaths. The tank gets picked off as well. He does make his way up on the high ground, quickly doing a good job here. Slowing down this base by a good margin. Getting a, a bit of a supply lead as well. Wow, so many SCVs are going down right now. Dropping down to 45. He was above 60 not too long ago. Thanks on the high ground. Going to receive the blessing of the D-Matrix. Another EMP is just about ready here, but this doesn't have any energy on it. Another EMP does go down, but he just kind of wasted that EMP. We should have more Arbiters out by now. Yeah, look at this. Arbiters with full energy are available. And there's really no more EMP to to uh, deal with those. So definitely a bit of a mistake there. He could hit this with a big recall right now. It would be massive. Quickly has a, a real opportunity to actually shut down Bishop 
and bring himself into a winning position here if he just brings through an arbiter and hits this base right now we don't have any energy for emp i'm not sure if he's aware of that fact though there's that 250 energy arbiter making its way over here towards the center left let's see if he can get this recall off shutting down this outlying base will put bishop onto one base mining okay or he could maybe recall on top of that i don't know bunch of zealots on top of here is that what he's going for all right he sees the goliath and decides to bail out of this situation interesting choice there quickly setting up another rally point in the bottom right hand corner as a very decently sized army 199 supply i don't know how quickly he's brought this back aside from just that one little play here with the stasis on the ramp i mean i guess that's what really brought him to a winning position here but he is definitely in the lead 200 supply against 140 you can absolutely just run over a terran player in those situations he's gonna throw down an emp but he's got two more very high energy arbiters to come through and my god they are they gonna get spells spells for days here he could even put down another stasis although it might actually block him um from dealing the damage that he wants to deal there's another nice stasis zealots are gonna be kind of blocked by that there's only two tanks in the background now and dragons coming from the north and from this high ground are gonna clear this up deal with this command center push it back more units reinforcements coming out here the drop over in the top center actually dealing a lot of damage gonna get an arbiter up there to help deal with that in just a moment quite a few scvs have gone down the stasis are starting to run out doesn't really have the muscle to stay and fight these tanks as they unthaw or as they thaw excuse me but gg is called that's enough for bishop the damage has been done surprising back and forth here between these two bishop and quickly seem to be very evenly matched it felt as though quickly was definitely going to win that game for a moment after the dt drop then it felt like our terran player was going to be able to win that game and then it was like no he never really could have won that game quickly just dominated in that final attack i guess it's all down to this play over here this was such a good move by quickly to put the ramp or put the stasis on the ramp there and just make it impossible to reinforce and bishop didn't want to vacate that base he could have floated away and just maybe gone down to six o'clock or something but he really wanted to fight over that and he took multiple bad trades ended up kind of losing his advantage that he gleaned from that good attack that he had here over in towards the natural where he killed the the nexus and really slowed down quickly yeah a lot of that advantage was just lost during that moment those few moments of taking the uh, fourth base but this is a really good game to learn from guys if you are struggling with protoss and terran you can see that even from a bad position from behind if you right, make the right moves you can absolutely bring yourself back into a winning spot both these players proved it multiple times in this series especially quickly but guys this is it for our games today definitely go check out the stream where i watched the qualifiers for the ssl if you haven't already i'll put that link down below Thank you guys again for checking out this video. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.